well welcome and uh, as I was saying I hope you're all uh, doing well enjoying the summer and um, tonight's talk will be about it will be a little different tonight it will be about uh, gratitude and we will go through a little exercise a little gratitude exercise before the loving kindness we'll we'll uh, simply go into the loving kindness from this uh, meditation on gratitude today and so uh, and uh, maybe we'll uh, we'll get to try out this uh, this little mantra <laughs> the the thank you mantra so I'll I'll explain a little bit la uh, later about this and I thought I would begin um, uh, with a, a couple of suttas and just to uh, just to have a better feel of what uh, this gratitude what what is it and uh, what does it do on the path and how important it is to our practice and to our daily life and to happiness itself and as I think all of you are fairly aware that the Buddha's path is very uh, revolves around uh, awareness and being aware and skillful and uh, gratitude is in fact very very close to awareness it's not that far <laughs> it is one of these states of the heart or the mind these very wholesome states where we are acknowledging what has been done to help us or what we have and it can be a very powerful tool in fact to help us uh, by cultivating it and developing it to help us um, perhaps break through a lot of blockages and break through a lot of unwholesome mental perspectives and work with the mind to shape it in a different way in a way that it sees reality in a very grateful appreciative and uplifted way and by so doing we are becoming more aware and gratitude is in fact intertwined with with uh, 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 what we call mindfulness or awareness uh, there has to be space there has to be enough sp spaciousness in our minds in our heart to feel gratitude and that spaciousness is awareness it is um, being able to to move away from me mine I to thank you <laughs> and so this means wise practice this includes wise practice and this means the result of that is more awareness which means we are letting go of whatever we want to do and all these things that we might have in our mind and in our heart that we're projecting or I want to do this I want to do that to contentment and contentment is a fairly important aspect of the path also Nikama or Santosa in Pali and 
Contentment is also bound with awareness because the content, appreciative mind is simply present. <laughs> it's happy here and now. And so this is a wonderful thing. And so gratitude really helps us. And in Pali, uh, gratitude is um, katanyuta. And that means, kata means uh, doing or a an action. It's uh, uh, active. Anyu is from the root anga, uh, ajna in Sanskrit. And this means uh, knowing or uh, recognizing. It has many meanings, but for this particular word. And so we... Uh, put these two together and this means acknowledging what was done <laughs> katanyuta and this is turned into an adjective with the ta at the end so knowing this it's, it's, it's fairly interesting to having enough mental presence and mental space to be able to recognize things acknowledge things that have come our way and that we have and it is everywhere in the monks practice also uh, the monks have amongst the 75 of the um, training rules we, we call them the sekiyas we have 75 these are the lowest rules the just the training rules if we break them is called a dukkata, wrongdoing. There's no real uh, uh, heavy <laughs> consequence of that. It's simply a way of training. That's why it's called a sekiya. And we have two of these rules on gratitude, which is interesting. And uh, one of them is to accept alms food with gratitude. <laughs> and so when we reflect back, if we didn't have gr gratitude in our minds when uh, we accepted an alms offering, food, every day, we are committing a wrongdoing. <laughs> and so this is, and this is not, um, this is, we see that as a very helpful thing, in fact. It's, it's not to, it's not to tell us what to do or anything, it's actually helping us. <laughs> it's not something that we think, oh, another rule, I have to respect another rule. No, it's in fact, it's a blessing because some people do need to be reminded. In fact, we have, uh, monks have 227 rules that, are, that is called the patimoka. And the sikhiyas are the last ones, the least... Uh, um, they are important, but uh, their weight is not... Uh, they are more like training rules. And so, we, we in fact, we, we have great respect for these rules because they're helping us cultivate wholesome qualities and tell us when the line is hard to draw in some places and this really helps us to draw that line sometimes. And the other rule on gratitude is while eating also. And so while accepting food from anyone, we have to be grateful. <laughs> this is a rule. And the second is while we eat. And so that is also why uh, monks will, generally speaking, monk, uh, will eat in silence. And... Uh, will have their gaze down on their bowl and eating because that is another rule in fact <laughs> and this is wonderful because this is also showing us something it's hard to be grateful when we're not mindful <laughs> and it's hard to be grateful when we're just letting our attention go everywhere and being completely distracted and so we 
also pay homage to the people that have offered us this food. This, in fact, they are giving us life every day. And we, this is a way that we, in fact, pay homage to that and make sure that we practice properly. And then the, the Buddha said in this, uh, this sutta that having four things, uh, a person is considered f foolish and immature, not a person of good. And the, one keeps oneself severed and uprooted from the Dhamma. One is blameworthy and blameable and generates much demerit. <laughs> oh, this is quite serious. Um, but this is the power of gratitude. One is physical misconduct. The second one is verbal misconduct. The third one is mental misconduct. These are the three fields of uh, actions. And the last one is being non-appreciative or un ungrateful. And... Uh, as the Buddha did this uh, very often, he will say the opposite right after. And he said, and then possessing four things, one is wise, mature, a person of good, and keeps oneself connected, firmly planted in the Dhamma. One is blameless and unblameable. And one generates much merit and goodness. What for? Physical good conduct, verbal good conduct, mental good conduct, and appreciation and gratitude. And so this is quite important. And it tells us how important it is, in fact, to, to the Dhamma and our practice. And how the Dhamma is not something apart from gratitude. It is, it is the practice. Being grateful is part of the practice. The Buddha is saying it here right now. And gratitude works in many ways in bringing a lot of wholesomeness around us and keeps us in this field and keeps the people around us also in this field. He said that there are two kinds of people in this world. One who, that are, that are uh, hard to encounter. <laughs> And one is someone who takes the lead in doing good and skillful actions. And the second one is an appreciative, grateful person. And so this is also um, quite interesting and shows us how, how important it is and how completely related to our practice this is. And so to develop gratitude is, is very important and very extremely wholesome. And as I was reading from a famous teacher, it, we, it's not so much to low talk <laughs> a lot of uh, the main, <laughs> a lot of the population. This is about saying, well, how about we become also this rare, hard to find, how to en hard to encounter uh, uh, percentage of the population? Because it's very important, and we it is something worth striving for. And uh, this this is also the Buddha also said things in order to arouse energy and determination so that we would cultivate wholesome qualities. And appreciation, gratitude will, will keep us, like the Buddha is saying here, will keep us firmly planted in the Dhamma. Because a grateful person is uh, 
is generating such merit, such goodness around them, that the Dhamma will keep flowing, <laughs> flowing there to that person. Because that person is directly practicing the path. A grateful person is not angry, it's grateful. <laughs> it's not wanting something, it's grateful. It's grateful for what it has, it's content. So it is very, very important in the practice. And one, one last thing here, if I can get this book together. <laughs> is um, concerning gratitude but towards parents and I've, uh, I've wanted to read this uh, for a while but uh, there's so many good suttas that it's hard to <laughs> we would need to have talk um, twice a day at least to, to go through all the good stuff but here to, to the parents to our parents and family. Monks, there are two persons that cannot easily be repaid. What two? One's mother and father. Even if one should carry about one's mother on one shoulder and one's father on the other shoulder, and while doing so should have a lifespan of a hundred years, <laughs> live for a hundred years, and if one should attend to them by anointing them with balms, by massaging, bathing and rubbing their limbs, and they even void their urine and excrement there, that's quite, that's quite the care. One still would not have done enough for one's parents, nor would have one repaid them. Even if one were to establish one's parents as the supreme lords and rulers over this great earth abounding in the seven treasures, one would still not have done enough for one's parents. Nor would, would one have repaid them. For what reason? Parents are of a great help to their children. They bring them up, feed them, and show them the world. But monks, if when one's parent lacks faith, and one encourages, settles, and establishes them in faith, if when one's parents are immoral, one encourages, settles, and establishes them in virtuous behavior, if, when one's parents are miserly, uh, miserly and one encourages, settles, and establishes them in generosity, if, when one's parents are unwise, one encourages, settles, and establishes them in wisdom, in such a way one has done enough for one's parents, repaid them, and done more than enough for them. And this is a wonderful sutta on the importance of uh, our parents. And uh, I know there's a few parents here and parents coming to be. And um, I, I thought uh, I would read this uh, in it for that purpose. And uh, the, the Buddha here is, is quite wonderful how profound uh, the devotion to parents uh, uh, can be and to not even be able to repay our parents from the depth, debt that we have acquired uh, upon them. And also this wonderful teaching at the end of how to repay our parents and not necessarily um, uh, talking about uh, the Dhamma or itself, but these five uh, qualities of uh, faith, generosity, and wisdom, and um, to help them develop this, these wonderful qualities. And so, uh, 
And this is not only to our parents, this is to, for everyone also. And this is showing us the wonder, the wonderful aspect of developing wholesome qualities and how, how important it is. And so with these suttas and this uh, introduction to gratitude, uh, I invite you to take a comfortable position and relax. And this will be an exercise, but also a meditation. In fact, the word bhavana, which is often translated in as meditation. It is one of the words that the that is translated as meditation by from the Buddha's teaching. Bhavana in fact means development, cultivating. And we will do this katanyuta bhavana here for a moment. And we will cultivate thoughts of gratitude. Cultivate gratitude. Now, if there's any tension in your body, simply relax it. And smile. Just be at ease for now. This is a very easy exercise. And to start with, we can begin by simply being grateful for this right here, right now. Simply these few moments that you just took close your eyes and to relax your body feel grateful for that for relaxing the mind also And for this wonderful opportunity, these wonderful opportunities that we have to get together every Tuesdays, we have the wealth and the privilege and the honor to be in this position where we have this internet we have computers, cell phones, it is a pandemic out there and we still can get together and talk about the Dhamma, cultivate the Dhamma. And this means cultivating wholesome states, talk about virtue, generosity, gratitude, meditation. And how truly fortunate we are to be here now in this highly, highly privileged situation. And smile. And here is when we can introduce
my favorite mantra, the thank you mantra. And just say thank you. And feel the power of that thought and word in your heart. Filling your whole body, your whole being. Thank you. Now you might feel that loving kindness just arises on its own. Very, very close. And perhaps you've eaten food today. That food came from somewhere. Perhaps there was making enough money to buy this food from gardeners, whether they're from the Kootenai area or whether they're from Argentina or Chile or Africa or California. Still, all this food came from somewhere, came from people growing it, harvesting it, putting it on a boat, on a plane, shipping it to where you are, and you've made money or done services that have brought you this wonderful food to you. Thank you. To all these people, to the worms in the soil that have turned unfertile soil into very fertile soil, that have grown these foods that we have been eating. Thank you. And feel the gratitude in your heart. Perhaps you're working a job and this allows you to live, to make a living. Feel gratitude. Thank you. Maybe you are wearing clothes right now. These clothes came from somewhere. Cotton comes from plants that grow on the earth, that are harvested by people or machines, that are driven by people. Manufactured in all sorts of ways, sewed, stitched, put together, measured, shipped, boxed, packaged, from here to there, 
labeled. Thank you. So many people on this earth, especially right now with COVID, are having such a hard time. So many people on this earth do not have food every day, do not have clothes sufficiently. How wealthy we are to have just these. Thank you. Perhaps you live in a house, a roof, with walls sheltered from the elements. It's not easy leaving, living on the forest floor. There's all sorts of animals. The ground is okay to sleep on, but maybe you sleep on the bed. Thank you. For shelter, protecting us from the heat, the rain, the cold, the seasons. Thank you. Many people in this world do not have that luxury. Of even having a place they can call home. A piece of broken sheet of metal hanging on to four slices of wood. How wealthy and fortunate we are. Thank you. And here in this culture, in this society, we have hospitals, we have medicine, we have pharmacies, we have all kinds of natural remedies, all kinds of natural treatments, allopathic, Ayurvedic. Homeopathic. Name it, we have it all. Thank you.
Now I have just guided you through the four requisites of life. These are the four requisites of monks to practice the holy life, the spiritual practice. These are in fact part of monk's practice to remember these four requisites of life. feel gratitude to have them, and to understand that's all we need. Thank you. Then having these four things wealthy of these four things then we only need to be grateful that's easy thank you What else do we need? Gratitude. Thank you. This earth under your feet that is always supporting you. That is growing all the food, giving all the materials for our shelters and homes and all of the things that we want to do, the travels, the plans, the projects, all coming from the earth, the trees the ground, the rocks, all the materials, all from the earth. Thank you, earth. Perhaps you've encountered people that have been hard to deal with, whether at work, at the grocery store, in the street, someone called you names, someone insulted you. Thank you. For giving me this wonderful opportunity to see how far I've practiced, to see how far I am in control of myself, to see how deep my love and compassion is or could be. Thank you for showing me my weaknesses so that I can work on them. Thank you.
the more we find reasons to be grateful, the more unshakable our happiness becomes. The more we truly practice the path, and I mean we do practice, all the time. This is also compassion. And the rude people, the people that are angry, the people that are arrogant, are the people that need our compassion the most. And so having all these requisites of life to be happy, to be fully happy, taking all of these things from the earth to support us, to help us live. What do we give back? What is our gift? And this is when we bring up the feeling of love. Bring this radiant, glowing, warm feeling of love right in the center of your chest. and feel it suffusing your whole body. That love for the earth, for all the people that have brought you food, clothes, shelter, medicine, for all the hospital workers, the health workers right now, and don't think people can't feel your love, they can. And don't keep this love only for yourself. Practice your generosity. Let it flow out everywhere in front of you. To all of space. Just love. Everywhere behind you to all of space, suffusing everywhere behind you. Love. Yes. 
to your left to all of space love everywhere to your right suffusing every corner of space love above you and below you both at the same time doesn't matter all around across everywhere and beyond completely exalted boundless without measure in all directions only love this is where we leave our judgments at the door our opinions our concepts our ideas critics it cannot stick here we have to let it go to experience this kind of love we have to let all of that go so let it go and just shine bright like the sun love and smile this is happy meditation gratitude is happiness love is happiness boundless love is boundless happiness when we cultivate boundless love 
boundless gratitude. Nothing can get in our way. Nothing can get in the way of our happiness. And this is what we give to the people around us. Love, gratitude, contentment, joy, compassion. Don't push, don't try so hard. It is the nature of the feeling of love in your heart. If you simply allow it, it will shine out in all directions. It is in fact more a matter of stepping out of it than trying to force it forward. getting out of the way, literally. If the I, me, mine mind arises, Just relax, get out of the way, and let it shine.
and smile. And rejoice. How fortunate, how wealthy we are to be here practicing this while there's a pandemic happening out there and that we're not really lacking of anything. And just that is such a beautiful gift. And how fortunate we are to be able to be here and gather on these Tuesdays. And practice literally cultivating love in the most wholesome kind of way. priceless. Rejoice. And I invite you to carry this love and carry the thank you mantra in your life all the time. This will help you stay close to the love and stay close to happiness, stay close to gratitude. It's always there. When it's not there, it's just because we're not there. <laughs> and keep finding reasons to be grateful, to say thank you. You don't have to say it out loud, just say thank you, thank you. Thank you. And find reasons to love, find reasons to have compassion, and find reasons to be grateful all the time. This is the teaching of the Buddha. And for some people, there's a retreat coming <laughs> where there will be seven days dedicated to just this. And this in itself is quite a wonderful thing and to rejoice about this and this wonderful opportunity. Is there any question? Namo Buddhaya Bhante. Namo Buddhaya Yuri. I have a question. Yes. Yes. How, how do you show gratitude to parents who are not wise and immoral? You can't change people. <laughs> so the best thing you can do is be the example. And so depending on the situation, every situation is different, of course. And you have 
to be wise and you have to find the wise path for you to be the wise example. And when you can shine the beauty of the Dhamma, when you can shine the beauty, and that means Dhamma as virtue, generosity, loving kindness, compassion, gratitude, when you yourself are so full of it that it just flows out of you naturally and you are very happy. You see, people, when they see happy people, they want to be like them. <laughs> monkey see, monkey do. I talked about that last Sunday. <laughs> and when we see happy people, we want to be happy like them. And so when you will be happy and if someone tells you things that are not really respectful or are un unwise and you are not phased by it and you respond instead of reacting, you respond with love, you respond with compassion, you respond with sympathetic joy, you respond, you respond with, with steady composure of your own mind, then they see the beauty of the Dhamma and they are, you are in fact giving them the gift of your own presence, of your own wisdom. The Buddha said, like I wrote in the book, just uh, as islands, he really said this a lot. Monks, be like islands on yourself. And this is what you have to do for others also, because you can't help others if you're drowning yourself. You have to be steady, you have to be firm, planted in the Dhamma, in virtue, in wholesome states. That's what being planted in Dhamma means, is being solid in wholesome mental states. And then you can hold out your hand and help others and uh, not trying to change them, but by being that island and they will just swim to your shore <laughs> and stand up by themselves. That's, yeah. that's what you can do. <laughs> Sadhu. I hope this answers. Good. Well, we've had this uh, really wonderful opportunity to, to do this tonight and uh, to uh, cultivate a lot of merits and goodness. So we do this aspiration and good wish and sharing our merits. May suffering ones be suffering free and the fear struck fearless be. May the grieving shed all grief, and may all beings find relief. May all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth, devas and nagas of mighty powers share this merit of ours. May they long protect the Buddha sasana and attain nibbana sadhu. I wish you all a wonderful, successful, loving, compassionate, grateful week. And um, see you next time.